Our book of the week this week is The Operator by Robert O'Neill. Very apropos, I think, this year as we remember the 19th anniversary of 9-11. This is the man who shot Osama bin Laden and the tale of his uh, humble beginnings in Butte, Montana to uh, the Marine and SEAL Team 6 who got the shot that killed the man who masterminded 9-11 and here's a little bit of that book I didn't think about the possibility of combat much less getting killed as a freshman in high school I saw guys who would graduated and actually joined the military come back to say goodbye to their teachers before going off to fight in desert storm as a 14 year old I didn't know any better so I thought that the war would be a high casualty conflict like Vietnam and they'd all die then I watched the war on CNN. Piece of cake. Besides, as I weighed the idea of signing up, we weren't at war, and there wasn't one looming. I thought it would be cool to wear the uniform and sing the cadences. Plus, I'd only be gone for a few years, and then I'd be back at Maloney's with a few war stories to impress the regulars. One day in April 1995, I went to the Marine Recruitment Office, but the recruiter wasn't there. I remember a funny line my Marine friends told me. The Marine Corps is actually... the part of the Department of Navy, the men's department, which I thought was, which is why I thought of walking into the Naval office. A reason that if anyone would know where this missing Marine was, the Navy recruiter would know. He was nothing special physically, but he was very clever. Had it been years later, I would have recognized why he imme why immediately. He was wearing khakis and he had anchors on his collar. He was a Navy chief. No matter what anyone says, chiefs make the Navy work. They do this with intelligence, loyalty, and experience. They can also be mean as hell. This chief had quotas to fill, and this was not an easy task in Butte, Montana, especially when your office is right next to the Marines. He looked me over, with, he looked me over skeptically and said, Why do you want to be a Marine? I said, Because Marines have the best snipers in the world. I want to be a sniper because I grew up hunting. He just nodded and said, look no further. We have snipers in the Navy. All you need to do is become a Navy SEAL. I didn't even know how to swim. But the way I thought, the way I thought about it was, hey, I'm kind of naive, but this guy's a professional recruiter. He's not going to lie to me, is he? And it wasn't a lie, exactly. Just a rather large omission. A kid off the Hicktown Street had about the same chance of making it as a Navy SEAL as the recruiter had of becoming an admiral. So in almost complete ignorance, I signed on the, on the dotted line. It was a deferred enrollment, which meant I had six months before I went to boot camp, which was a good thing. I could keep myself alive in the water, but couldn't swim. I never attempted a pull-up. A brochure that had been thoughtfully provided in the recruitment paperwork revealed that to even qualify for a SEAL tryout, you had to be able to do a minimum of eight pull-ups, and that's after you swim 500 yards, and do 42 push-ups and 50 sit-ups, and, bef and before you run. Right then, I decided to quit my job, shoveling crushed rock, and devote myself full-time to getting in shape for the SEAL screening test. I'd been shoveling that rock for months, building my strength. How hard could this be? Full of can-do can fervor, I ran down to the park near my mom's house that had been rusted out. Full of can-do fervor, I ran down to a park near my mom's house that had a rusted old pull-up bar to see how many pull-ups beyond the eight minimum I could do. I sprang easily from the dirt to press beneath, grabbed the pull-up bar with confidence, and heaved. One. Gravity rudely yanked my arms back to full extension. It took all my will to keep my grip on the bar before releasing. My brain frantically signaled to my biceps to fire and pull me back up. My biceps replied, F you. Words formed so clearly in my mind that I may have said them out loud. Oh my God, these are hard. I need to get, I need to get better at pull-ups. Still, my optimism wasn't entirely crushed yet. Next, I went to the college pool. Fortunately, I still had my student ID. I figured I'd start with a quick thousand meters, which is 40 lengths of the pool. By the end of the second, second length, my arms ached and my legs felt like they were about to cramp. I could barely lift myself out of the pool. Okay, I was pathetic, but I wasn't defeated. Every day I worked at getting better. 
One day at the pool, I was lucky enough to run into a friend from high school who was getting ready to swim at Notre Dame for four years. When he saw me struggling through the water, he said, what are you doing here? I just joined the Navy, I said. I'm going to SEAL school. You know, they swim like a mile a day there. He looked at me and shook his head, dude, you have no idea what you're getting into. There's a thousand percent chance you're not going to make it. Get back in the pool. He showed me some basic swimming techniques and I worked hard to master them. My stepfather built me a pull-up bar in the basement of my mom's house. I would go down there, cue up Guns N' Roses, use your illusion one and two, crank the volume up to liquefy, and just do pull-up after pull-up. I didn't realize how appropriate that title was until later, but I was definitely using my illusion that I would become a SEAL to motivate myself. I began to understand something important. If you want to get better at pull-ups, do more pull-ups. That's it. And that's what I did. One thing I had going for me was that I was, I'd always been a good runner. I had a route that, I ran, that it ran a straight shot down the street from my mom's house, past my best friend's house and my cousin's house to a stoplight that was exactly a mile away. I always wanted to run it in no more than six minutes. At the light, I'd take a 30 second breather, then run back. Every morning, seven days a week, I'd get up and go down to the pool to swim for a few hours, come home, chill out, eat, knock out pull-ups, go for the run for six months. For six months, this is my full-time job, and at night I delivered pieces. I was really enjoying myself, and I got a lot, and I got a lot stronger. So, the reason I bring this book out again, because it's appropriate for 9-11, but also, to, this is something you guys can put on in the truck. Or, you know, if you're listening to this and you're not a truck driver, put on in the car. Buy this on audiobook. It's a really good listen, uh, very captivating. Uh, it's very long, uh, and, and O'Neill does a good job of, of keeping your attention, this sort of thing. Good, good motivation to say, hey, here's this, this hit kid from the hick town of, of Butte who couldn't do one pull-up. Um, and through some hard work and determination, um, ended up not only being in Navy SEAL, but being in w the most elite team of the SEALs, Team 6, who was assigned to, uh, to find and kill Osama bin Laden, and they succeeded. So, from these humble beginnings, it can be done. And I don't know about you guys out there, but some mornings I don't even feel like getting out of bed. And these are the kinds of things that, that help keep me vo motivated. All right, there we go. It's a wrap on Hack 8. We'll see you guys next time for Hack 9. Also, don't forget to check out the Trucker Path app. Very helpful app. We'll see you next time.